Now we've all know about the Dorothy Hart part of the story. What is now the Dorothy Hart Center? And that's a powerful story of defiance that the Walker Grant class of 1950, led by Reverend Hester, when they were told that they could get their diplomas uh, in the side door, but they could not enter the front door because of the fact that they were Negroes, <laughs> as they were known then. Yeah. And so something said to them, that's not acceptable. And so they decided to march literally, literally from Dorothy Hart, where, what is now Dorothy Hart, and they marched to Shallow Baptist Church to have their graduation ceremony here under the leadership of Dr. Hester. So as the plaque suggests in the last line, so they could receive their diplomas with the dignity that they deserved. Yeah. And so it's powerful, and this is 1950, a story that was hidden even to some of the family members because, uh, but because of its importance and the timing of it. As I remind our congregation, this is five years before the Montgomery bus boycott, which took place in December of 55. This is five years before the, the murder of Emmett Till, a 13-year-old black kid who came down to Mississippi from Chicago and went back in a body bag. This is 10 years before the students of North Carolina a and and it spread to all other historical black colleges where they said, we're here getting an education, we need to get involved. And we owe those, all those persons a great debt. But way back in 1950, these young people with the leadership of Dr. Hester and others decided to stand up rather than to go with their backs bent. Unfortunately, the story was hidden, uh, not talked about, not widely known for too long, but I'm thankful to uh, Mr. Sonny Holmes and so many others who would not allow this story to be buried. And so many of us gathered down at the Dorothy Hart Center when there was a uh, commission with a plaque and a telling of the story. And there were some of the survivors who left and who are fewer in number as each day passes. And so, but it was, it was woefully inadequate in the sense that they marched from somewhere to somewhere. I sat on the, uh, on the, the National Commission for the Selma to Montgomery Historic Trail when I lived there. We didn't just put a marker in Selma. We didn't just put a marker in Montgomery. We put a marker in Selma and then even along the way at various stops all the way to Montgomery. Because otherwise, that story and that journey would have been considered to be incomplete. The plaque at Dorothy Hart is just part of the story. Mm -hmm. We complete the story with this with this shallow um, uh, gathering of 1950 under the leadership of Dr. Hester and those courageous students. I, I give thanks to those young men and women who were courageous enough to literally put their lives on the line because when, I'm sure when white uh, Fredericksburg heard about it. Uh, I'm, not, I'm sure they didn't applaud. Yeah. <laughs> and say, that's great. But I'm more like, how dare they? Who do they think they are? Somebody needs to put them back in their place. Who, you know, that they would just think they could just snub us. We, we, we tried to let them come in the side door. They've been coming through the side door for years. So What's the, what's the problem with, the, with not doing that now? And I'm thankful because they didn't go through the side door. I don't have to go through the side door. And you talk about dignity. This is another way to to restore that, to tell the story, to have the plaques, to tell other stories. This, that, that's kind of the, the, the words you could attach to a lot of things going on right now. Absolutely. There are always going to be those stories to tell. There will always be... Um, bridges that need to be built and places where there are chasms where we need to repair uh, what's been torn and how do we, we build brotherhood and sisterhood and so I think that's the task of all of us and so it can be done on a personal level with family where people are not speaking to each other they're the, the same family and it can be done on a larger scale with people between races, between people who worship differently, between people who love differently, and all of those things. I think we have to be intentional, uh, not accidental, but be intentional about our efforts, knowing that 
to do so is not a safe thing. I think we, we err on the side of caution all too much. And I think in order to affect change, you have to put skin in the game to the point of even if it means uh, to be harmed or even killed. And when I look at the civil rights movement, which uh, is a segment of our history that I uh, love, and the more I learn, the more I appreciate their their willingness to put their bodies uh, uh, on the line to to make not only black folk free, but to free white people from the mindset that they thought that they were superior. Because that kind of thinking gets you into um, genocide, that you're not killing a person. This is somebody who's less than you are. So whatever you do to them is, you know, there's nothing, no, no harm will come to you. That's why you see these pictures of lynchings and these people are gleefully uh, looking at at the body of a of a human being that they consider to be inhuman, and so uh, it's important that we tell these stories because there are more bridges to cross, there are more uh, walks to be made, there are more stories to be told uh, to make us the human being and the human family that we were meant to be. Well, thanks for this because this again this this kind of completes the circle on this, but like you said, there there are many more stories to be told. Right, thank you. Thank you, Ted, for always covering these stories, helping to get it out there, the word and the news out there, because it's, it's um, there, there are other, other bridges to cross. Yeah. And this helps us to get there. Thank you for all you do.